everybody is dr rick dropping in on you hope everybody is having an unbelievable uh start to your day um running a real quick errand thought it would be a good time to drop in and sort of have a conversation with you guys um to keep with uh my obligations, I'm going to remind you that we are in the midst of a fundraiser. If you want to support the work we do uh, in the black community in a number of different ways, uh, go into the description box, click the link, and show some love. If you don't like uh, doing it that way and you prefer the Cash App route, the organization's Cash App uh, information is also in the description box. <laughs> Look, um, I've been doing this for a while. I'm not new to this. Um, I, I've been on this journey since I was a teenager. Whoa. Oh. Don't worry about that. I've been on this journey since I was a teenager. Um, and I've taken uh, my blackness and my responsibility as a black male seriously it doesn't mean I've always done things the way it should be I had my bout with immaturity as everyone else uh, I've had some decisions I wish I could make over like everyone else but my love for my people has always been there my desire to be um, a contributor to the development of young black minds has always been there. The desire to be an instrument of change and hope and, and, and belief in something better, again, for my people has always been there. So this isn't new to me. This isn't something that's just, just started uh, 10, 11 years ago when I popped up on social media. I had been in the game long before then. I had been passionate about uh, what I speak on now, I have been studying, reading, writing for decades. Uh, and so when I address an issue like trauma, I'm not addressing it from a superficial perspective. It's an area of expertise that I operate in and I help people in on a professional level. It's what I do for a living. Uh, when I talk about it, I'm talking about it from understanding how it impacts us as individuals and as a collective. Um, and one of the things that I'm looking at is a lot of the things that are playing out in the community is that we haven't addressed multi-generational trauma. Uh, we have in many instances allowed uh, outsiders to convince us that because we are 100 now and 57 years, uh, I think I'm counting right, 157 years removed from slavery, uh, technically, uh, that somehow that time should have given us what we needed to overcome the 246 years of chattel slavery where our identity was taken from us, where our spiritual practices and our names were taken from us and so much more uh, was lost in way of freedom and an ability to move in humanity. Uh, that is, you know, something that uh, we, we fail to realize. Then we, we have to look at the fact that even after we were emancipated, we weren't emancipated into a utopia. We weren't emancipated into a space in which all the necessary tools and proper environments were in place to ensure that we could heal. We were uh, ejected into a hostile environment where we literally lost value to our oppressor. As slaves, we were property and we carried value. And uh, while they would terrorize us and beat us to kill one of us, was an extreme because it was the destruction of something valuable and it had a price tag on it. And when we removed that price tag, 
we became targets. And we had 12 years of reconstruction along with about 18 more years of black codes that rolled into 70 plus years of Jim Crow segregation. And, and if anybody studied any of that, we know that that was hostile times and what we were doing at that time were, was, was experiencing re-injury for those who were freed as slaves. And then we were experiencing complex injury for those that were birthed after slavery uh, ended. And so we've been dealing with this going on and we've brought the uh, negative habits, the negative responses, trauma responses, uh, down through the lines. We've literally conditioned and trained people who haven't had any major trauma to behave as if they were traumatized simply through uh, the environment we put them in and how they've watched us respond and we've created that and that's a part of it. And we have to have an understanding of all of that. I've talked about this in great detail. And then here's the problem. Traumatized people tend to traumatize people. Not intentionally, but in, in an attempt to deal with and confront in the only way they know how or react to their traumatic memories, they are in turn harming people and hurting people and doing a lot of other things. And that is uh, something that we definitely have to confront. That's something that we have to be willing to examine. I've talked about it for years. Uh, I have been at the forefront of offering ideas and, 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 and programs and suggestions and solutions, and I will continue to do so. But here's the thing. We're going to have to do a greater, a better job of focusing on mental health. Uh, mental health is that taboo topic that we don't like talking about alone with uh, childhood sexual abuse and incest. We, we don't want to talk about those and how they impact us and how we are literally sending generation and generation into a, uh, an extremely hostile environment that is inherently hostile towards them and expecting them to perform injured, expecting them to perform uh, when they're not at their peak because they've been traumatized, because they've gone through some things. Uh, we need to talk about why as uh, much as 60% of our black females have experienced some form of childhood sexual abuse before the age of 18. We need to talk about uh, the damages and, 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 and situations that come along with absentee parenting, uh, the things that come along with uh, parents who are addicted to controlled substances, the problems that come along with separation and so much more. There are things that definitely have to be addressed. And one thing that the Odyssey Project has done is it has served as a think tank uh, for creating solutions. It has, you know, offered so much in the way of empirical data, social uh, and experiential data, uh, and uh, the solutions to the enigmatic issues we face, and we will continue to do that. I will continue to spearhead research. I will continue to spearhead uh, thought thought uh, uh, practices to where we come together, but we are going to have to confront this. It's simple. We can sit up and point fingers. We can sit up and place blame. We can sit up and do a lot of things that say, hey, uh, it's their fault. They are who they are. And there's an old African adage that says that if the enemy, there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. That's the thing we need to focus on. We need to focus on ensuring that there's no enemy within because if there's no enemy within, we can withstand and repel anything they bring to us. We're that brilliant. We're that strong. We're that powerful. But as long as there's an ability to manipulate us, as long as there's an ability to create division, as long as there's an, uh, a, a reality in which we are harming one another at, 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 in, 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 great, in, in great frequency, uh, there's going to be a problem. So my challenge is that we've got to do better. We've got to invest in ourselves. We've got to be willing to get the help. We've got to be willing to offer the help. We've got to have the help available. Access to the things that we... we, we gee whiz, I got to tighten that up. Uh, we... Um, 
got to do a better job of providing resources. That's one of the things that we're lacking in is where it's needed most, it doesn't exist. You know, the people who can afford to come and pay me, and I work with a lot of people who can't, people who know that know, to the point that it's a, it's a detriment. I've had to bring a team in that's actually monitoring it and making sure that my heart doesn't sink my business because of how much I care and how much I work. But, 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 but I can tell you that my clients can afford the ones who are with me on a regular basis, they can afford me. But that's a small part of the population. The vast majority cannot afford me. And I do what I can, but there are limits to what I can do without sinking myself. And so, what am I saying? I'm saying it's time for us to create situations where we can actually be better. We can heal, we can grow, we can become uh, the things that we need to be in order to do the things we need to do. It's not going to happen mystically or magically. It's going to happen from the work we put in. This is my challenge to you. This is my challenge that we wake up and actually do more than we've been doing. On that note, look, I'm about to get out of here. First stop, and you guys have an unbelievable day.